Hello everyone, Blaze Red here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to rig a universal joint in Blender. So this tutorial was inspired by uh, a post by Andrew Price, um, including the work of Moran Goldstein. So as you can see, he's done a wonderful job of rigging a universal joint. It looks pretty cool. I'll provide a link to this in the description if you want to have a look for yourself, but that's the basic idea of it. So I was wondering if this could be done in Blender. So basically I opened up Blender and I tried to do it and this was the result. So it is possible and I'll be showing you how to do that in a few seconds. So to get started just open up the starting file which is also in the description and this is what you should open it up to. <clears throat> now a few things to take note here is that these have been modeled so that the center of rotation for the joint is at the origin and everything each the objects centers are also at the origin so if I were to rotate this object now it would rotate around the origin just like that as you can see if I just select a bunch of those there you go so to begin or to actually the basic gist of this tutorial is that we'll be using a, uh, perhaps three different track two constraints and um, parenting these objects to a few empties and by doing so we'll have set up the universal joint. So to begin we'll add two empties. Uh, for the first empty we'll name this aim and we'll move this off to the side on the x-axis by 4. We'll add another empty and we'll move this off in the y-axis and we'll just call this track. You can name these anything you want, I'm just saying this so that I can remember it <laughs> later on. Now the first thing we want to do is select uh, the, the cross object and also the aim object and uh, by holding shift and selecting of course and select the final input object and press control P to parent the object to the input object. So if we were to rotate the input now you'll see how everything follows along. Uh, this is how it'll, it'll be rotating. So that's good. <clears throat> now we also want this uh, the cross object to track to the track object, uh, track empty, while maintaining the rotation on the x-axis by the input. So to do that we'll select the cross object, shift select the aim empty, uh, the track empty, control T to add a lock track constraint. We'll select our cross object and go to the constraints panel and we'll switch this over to normal transform orientation just to see the orientation of the object itself. So we want to track the Y axis of the cross to the track object and that's selected and if we just test this out now we'll see that the wrong axis is locked currently the Z axis is locked but we want the X axis to be locked so we'll go ahead and do that and now we'll do this and you'll see how that works fine if we were to leave that there and rotate the input you'll see how it's tracking along perfectly so now we want to do something similar for the output object. To do that, what we need to do is <clears throat> track or have the output object tracking the track empty. So we'll, we'll do the similar procedure as before. Select the output, shift select the track, control T, but this time we'll choose track to constraint. And we'll go have a look to the constraints of that. Now we want to track <coughs> with the track to constraint. We want to track the uh, the track object on the y axis, and we want to keep the z axis as the up. So that's working well currently. But as you can see, the problem that comes up is it's not quite connected. So the way we fix that is to add a locked track constraint but tracking this object here. 
So what that is going to do essentially is when you, we rotate the input object and say this is moved, it's going to be tracking that input object as well and stay aligned with this cross object. So we'll just undo that. So we'll select our output object, shift select the aim empty, control T, lock track, and you can see it's <laughs> not going to work straight off the bat. <clears throat> we'll just hide these constraints for now so that we can set up the locked track constraint. So essentially what we want to do is have the Z, uh, sorry, the X axis tracking the aim object while locking the Z axis. So let's just test that and show these once more and we'll see how that's working and that's not working right. So we'll try locking, I think it's the, the Y. There we go. That looks a bit better. And that's perfect. Great. So if we were to just move this along and rotate this along the right Y axis, you can see how that's working perfectly. So basically that's how you set up a universal joint rig. So we'll just go ahead and just show this to you. And that's how it works. And if you were to animate that, you would have something like this. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.